Well, today I'm turning something pretty simple, and uh, everyone with a lathe can make one of these. And it's a great beginner project. It's a lot of fun, and you can make about any shape you want on it. So, what are we making? Well, it's a bottle stopper. These were only, uh, I think they were 10 for $15. It has a metric thread here, so I'll drill a hole and tap into this block of walnut. That's about an inch and a half square and a little over two inches long. So what I'm going to do is get it mounted up in my chuck and I'll show you the procedure for getting the end of this flat which is very important. So I've watched a couple videos because you know what? I've never made one of these so I just kind of took a couple ideas and put them together. One way to get this flat is to use a Forstner bit and I just need an area flat enough for this to seat in. So you don't need to try to turn that flat. And I actually did just turn one about an hour ago and it's uh, made out of this piece of wood. It's kind of pretty. And I wanted to test the mandrel that I made to hold this. That's why I turned it. So it's kind of a special little piece of wood. A good friend of mine gave me this and I'll bet you a lot of you know him. So I'll let you think about it. Once I get this turned I'll hit another piece of this wood. I'll tell you what it is and then I'll tell you who gave me this wood. So let me show you what happens here. Bring this up pretty close. I have the lathe in low range. Not to drill this hole so much but I'll show you the operation where we really want low range. Because this is a little trick that will really help you. Not this, but after we drill the hole, I'll show you that trick. This is the drill bit that we need for the cap, which is a 8 by 1.25. So I want to spin this a little faster than what I just did. The nice thing about that Forstner bit, it leaves a, a little starting point for the drill bit. We want that as straight as we can get it, and that is really nice and straight. Go ahead and go down about an inch. I think that's about an inch. All right, I'll show you the easy way to tap the threads. Now I've done this on a metal lathe many times. I put this tap in the chuck and I'll just give it a little bit of tightening. And I'll show you why. Now this is why we're in low range. I'll slow that down. That's about 80 RPM. I'll show you what goes on here. I think you can see that area there. I put that block of wood about an inch away from it. And this will pull the tap into it, dragging the uh, tailstock with it. Okay, see I got my both hands here. I'm not doing anything. Probably got to go a little farther than that. And if it bottoms out, it'll slip just like it did right there. You're not going to snap a tap off. Well, that's, that's something I did a lot tapping aluminum or steel. We are tapped that easy. Here's the piece that goes in it, like that. I took a piece of maple. I turned a tenon on it. Flipped it around, put it in the chuck, I put this taper on it. Then I drilled the hole through there and tapped that. So I will be mounting these little blocks onto this bolt that sticks through here. I decided to add a piece of aluminum here, which I tapped. As we turn the shape on there, if I have wood there, I've got to be a lot more careful that I don't cut the wood away because 
that diameter represents pretty much the base of that bottle stopper. So you probably heard a lot not to take the piece out of the chuck, but this is kiln dried. I have it fitting as close as you can with the jaws. I mark it so it goes back in the same spot and I try to cinch it down the same way. So let's see. It's, it's running not so bad. All right, I will get the lathe back into high range and we'll get that block right. on there and turn. I'm ready to put the block on it. And I just wanted to say that if you have six of these blocks that you're gonna make six bottle stoppers, do all of the operations on it while it's set up. Otherwise, put this in the chuck, flatten it, drill it, tap it. Put the other one in. Don't keep changing back and forth. I now have six of them ready. And that tightens up just fine. Looks like it's turning pretty nice. Just like with a bowl, it's good to get it spinning before you touch it with that live center. So now it's in there really nice. Use a smaller tool rest. And I will use my spindle roughing gouge. 1387 RPM. That's the top. <clears throat> that's the only one that I have to get round at that diameter because the rest of that's going to get cut away. I'm going to use my half inch bowl gouge. Okay, we'll just put a little simple shape on this. I just went up and blended it into that piece of aluminum. Now we can pull this back out of the way. See how much it talks to you when you take this away? Anytime you can keep support on your work, it's a good thing. So that doesn't get you much simpler shape than that right there. Alright, I'm going to start with 120 and I'll probably just go through 320 and we'll get some finish on it. Standing in reverse, because that's so small, I'm actually about 790 RPM. Okay, standing gonna look the same. And I'll get it up to maybe 400 and uh, then we'll get the finish on it. I sanded it through 400. I'll go ahead and spray a coat of lacquer on it and I'll probably put two more but I'll just show you this one. That looks pretty nice. That is some pretty walnut. So, this little piece that I was talking about here, I'll be turning a piece of that next, and so we'll talk a little bit more about what kind of wood it is, and maybe you can figure out who gave it to me because I've got a big tip that really should help you. So, I'll be right back. This one's all done, and it did not take very long to do from start to finish. 
not counting the preparation of the blocks, this didn't take uh, any more than three minutes to turn it, sand it, and put a finish on it. So if you're into craft shows, you could probably do quite well with something like this. Next one I do is not going to take three minutes. I don't know how long it's going to take. And that's going to be out of some of this wood. That's the block I'm going to use. Just looking at the block, it kind of looks like the other one, and it should take about three minutes to make it, except for one thing. I've got all this nature in here, and I want to keep it. I mounted this block against this. It's another tenon with a, a larger face on it. I mounted it on here and got it offset to where that's the center right there. You can see that uh, I'll be cutting a lot of this away. So, this clue should do it. Um, the person that gave me this is well known for leaving a lot of nature in his turnings. So let me go ahead and get this mounted up and you think about it when I get it finished, as long as I can finish it, I will let you know who that is. I've got it on my mandrel now and you can see how far this goes. There is not much wood at this point between that threaded bolt and that surface. So this is, I'm sure hoping it stays together, but it's the only way I can get the look I'm after. Because of that, I cut this off of it because I needed to not have these corners catching and have that break through. That's the plan anyways. I also think I'll use my half inch bowl gouge instead of the spindle roughing gouge. Again, I don't want to grab a big piece of that wood and have it crack where the rod goes in there. I can still get it turning about 1100 RPM. Grab my face shield. And let's see if we can do this. Okay, I think that's good. And since it'll be hard to sand with that airspace, I'll just start with 120 and do it like this. And now I'll tell you where I got this wood. In September of 2020, we took a trip up the Olympic Peninsula in Washington. Well, on the way home, we stopped by Shady Acres. Well, Shady Acres, that's Phil Anderson. So that's where I got this wood from. We had a nice visit and he gave me some olive wood. Gave me some big pieces of olive wood. And these are some of the trimmings that I did on a couple of the turns. So that's the reason I wanted to use the olive wood and leave all that nature in there because Phil is the best at leaving nature in a piece of wood. 
So I bet you a lot of you guess. Well, here they are. I think they look pretty nice. Tried to make them all look a little different. I'll show you each one and tell you what wood it is. That one you've seen, that's a piece of olive. It's very pretty. That's a piece of walnut. I think it looks great. Different shape. Piece of maple burl. These were all scraps I had laying around. Different shape as well. Macadamia. This one is a beauty. See those stripes right there? Wow. Another piece of walnut. Looks pretty nice. I'll have pictures at the end so you can see these a lot better. Another piece of walnut. This one's a gorgeous piece of walnut. I finished all of these with three coats of lacquer sprayed on and wow it's just a glass like finish and then I went over it with axe abrasive paste. I did that to all of them except this one and this is the one that I really love a lot. That is also a piece of olive that I got from Phil. And all of this area here I think is what makes this piece unique and special. So I'm going to put a link in the description for the video that Phil had when him and I met up back in 2020 and he gave me this wood and if you want to see what I look like standing in front of a camera talking Phil's got that in his video so you can have a peek at that there and I also have a video of that day with photos in it and I'll put a link in the description for that. So this was a lot of fun and I think it's an easy way to make these and get started. So if you know anyone that wants to do it but doesn't want to spend a lot to get going on it, uh, share that video around and maybe they can have a lot of fun too. So I really hope you enjoyed this video because I really had fun making them. If you liked the video, you can let me know by hitting that like button. Also, leave a comment and tell me what you think. I love reading them all and I do my best to answer them all. If you're currently not subscribed, please consider doing so. If you are subscribed, thank you very much. I truly appreciate each and every one of you. I do all types of turnings and I love doing them all. Let me know your favorites. Thanks again and until the next time, see you later.